Welcome to Electron Online, and here's our first example of how to solve a statics problem. We can always assume that the sum of the forces in the x direction add up to zero and the sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero because at this point nothing is moving, nothing is accelerating. So we can indicate that as follows. Now what's going on here is we have a horizontal beam which is attached to the wall right here which is being exerted, uh, which has a force exerted on it at the end right here vertically downward. It is being kept from going down by this beam right here. So as you're applying a force here, this beam is being pulled away from this position right there. So this beam is under tension. And so we can say that there is a force that's pulling on this connection right here in this direction. That force will be equal to P that will have a vertical component and that will have a horizontal component. Now, if we assume that the vertical component has a magnitude of 960 newtons, what will be the force on the beam, the force of tension, and what will be the x component of the force? Well, let's see here. Notice we can turn this into a triangle by completing this line right there, and that means that we can find out what this angle is equal to right there is theta. We know that theta plus 35 degrees must be equal to 90 degrees, so therefore theta is equal to 90 degrees minus 35 degrees, which is equal to 55 degrees. So now we have this triangle right here. P forms the hypotenuse. This forms the adjacent side to that angle. So therefore we can say that by definition the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case the adjacent side would be the magnitude P sub y and the hypotenuse would be the force P. Since we're looking for P, we're going to take this equation and solve it for P. That means that P is equal to P sub y divided by the cosine of theta. So in this case, P sub y being 960 newtons and the cosine of 55 degrees. And let's see what that is equal to. So we have 960 divided by 55, take the cosine equals, and that would be 1674 Newtons. All right, so now we want to find the x component, which is this component right here. So that means we can go ahead and take this triangle right here. So here we have the angle of 35 degrees. We have the hypotenuse, which we now know what that is equal to, and we're looking for p sub x. So we can say that p sub x is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of 35 degrees. And we know that the hypotenuse is equal to the force P, so that is P times the cosine of 35 degrees, and P was equal to 1674 newtons. We multiply that times the cosine of 35 degrees, and that would be equal to times 35, take the cosine, equals, and we have 1371 newtons. And that would be the component in the x direction, and this would be the total force. And that is it. And that is how we do that. Again, it all comes down to that the sum of the forces in the x and y direction must equal to zero. To counterbalance the force at the end of the beam, there is a force of tension on the beam. They gave us the y component of that force. We have to figure out the force itself and the x component by using these relationships. Always, it's always a good idea to write down the definitions. For example, write down the definition of the cosine as being the adjacent over the hypotenuse because that way we can figure out what the adjacent is to the angle in question, what the hypotenuse is, and then it makes it a lot easier to solve the problem correctly. I always recommend that you write down the definitions of the angles because sometimes we use the cosine and the sine interchangeably depending upon what the drawing looks like. And that's how we find the forces on the beam.